Welcome back to Money with Mac and G. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on our podcast. Now we're into part two of our interview with Glenn Shisha, who was a motivated individual and an entrepreneur at heart. He was willing to take risks, which led him to Asia as well as the West Coast without a job. But ultimately, he found one with Disney. But he goes on to get his MBA, and on a fluke, he takes an on-campus interview, which leads him to Orlando, where he gets to meet someone special who we haven't found out who it is yet. It's with great pleasure I get to bring back a close friend to tell the rest of his story of how his driving force is working somewhere with his set of values. I hope you enjoy part two of this discussion with Glenn Shisha, international strategist and entrepreneur. I get this call that they want me to come down to Orlando to meet with, you know, the CEO and talk into the job with strategic planning, starting out in strategic planning, which would kind of help to build big. Yeah. A a lot of the strategic direction where the organization is going to go to, whether it's acquisitions or this or that or everything. And I'm like, okay, don't know anything about this product this whatever, but free trip to Orlando for the weekend. Again, I'm a starving student. I am all over that. (laughs) So so I came down and um, my first interview was with the CEO. He- Was that Rick? Yeah, yeah. Well, and sorry, Rick, he asked me like probably two or three questions legally. He was not allowed to ask me. (laughs) But he did anyway. (laughs) But he did anyway. And and he's like, oh, I know I shouldn't, I know I'm not allowed to ask this, but I don't care. And, I'm, and, yeah, and I just found that to be so refreshing, refreshing yeah. and just open that I was like, wow, this is a great guy. He didn't give a crap. He just, he wants to know who I am personally, you know, Absolutely. and not like trying to fit you into a bucket. Be or... very careful about every step. He's like, you know, we want to hire the right people. We want these people to be the right. And the only way I can find out is ask in this is, is in this process. So. And every single person in the organization I met was like that. And it was just fantastic. I came back and I said, you know, when I joined Disney, it was about the brand, you know, the Disney brand, yes. you know, and it was, it was a great brand. Um, I always joke that I was one of the few people at Disney that actually wanted to do my job because most <laughs> of the other people at Disney were, were being an accountant because they also hoped to get an acting job, an acting job or a writer job or a director job, you know, and I was the only one that was in finance wanting to be in finance. But when I, when this group here, um, they, they were just all awesome people. And I said to myself, you know, I spend, you spend most of the day with the people you work more than my kids, more than whatever. And I didn't have any of that. So you got to be able to like them. If you don't like, you know, um, if you don't like the people you work with, you shouldn't be doing it. You don't get involved there. That should be your first radar because you ain't going to grow to like them. It's just going to get worse. You know, and I like them all. I had the, I like them all. It had international opportunities because I knew I'd be traveling a little bit, but I'd be based out of Orlando. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. (laughs) Sunshine and the beach is one hour away. And because I was based out of Orlando, I knew I could be close to be able to take care of my grandmother at a moment's notice. And it just kind of, so I, I said yes. So this isn't my story, but the quick part was I took a job with Tupperware and the day that I knew that I would pick the right spot is when they came over the announcement in the entire uh, building they said, hey, please come outside to welcome yeah. our distributors. They were 98% female. Yeah. Welcome our distributors. And they had these big PA, public announcement systems with just music pumping and they wanted you to dance and to be fun. And I was just like, this is the place for me. Mm-hmm. They, they were fabulous at, at making people feel special. Yes, that is 100%. And in, in what, you know, money is money. We all need to make it. Right. Um, but for a lot of those women in direct selling, you know, who are maybe housewives, maybe just working, they, they don't get thanked for all or shown appreciation working, you know. for all the things they do. And being a part and of that, that helping of the life of service. Selling, you know, part of it was some supplemental income that might pay, but part of it was just really about self-worth, about having somebody appreciate what you were doing and recognizing that. And that was fabulous. And yeah, I'm giving yeah. them opportunities. I completely agree. So, so you get into this whole thing though with strategy, right? Yeah. You're doing some strategic planning. Doing some strategic planning. I helped build the, well, I led the building of the, the, the Tupperware website. You know, and of course, this was the early days of internet. Were you and working that, with what's his name at the um, 
uh, Mr. What's his name, or was it <laughs> no, What's and no, his name? What the, was the it? website? Um, I, I always think of the creative guy that designed the products, but um, oh, geez, Morrison Cousins. Yes, but no, no, he was it. So uh, he I, didn't do so I, website. you know, and so I'm looking to create the the website, and of course, you know, this is those early days, and the old people are like, oh, you're new here, you don't understand, you know, we've been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, <laughs> this website, is just a fad, man. it'll go away, oh you know, gosh. and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do this great website, you know, we're gonna, you know, let's put like a a coupon on it that they can print out to redeem it up. Oh God, no, the world's gonna end, you know? <laughs> uh, I can see that because we had a lot of great people there, but yeah. there was still yeah, there's a some... foot in the past. And so you're just like, history oh my gosh. Can, history can ground you, it can hold you back. And you have to figure out which parts are grounding and which parts are holding you back, yeah, you know? Exactly. So, um, so, you know, and then, you know, I got a little bit yeah, creative, you could say. Yes, and so what did. we did was, uh, because they don't call it this anymore, but we sat and we we went into the, the media room and actually burped Tupperware, which means you go around the Tupperware and then at the very end you squeeze it to get some air out. Really and it burp. sounds like a burp, yeah. Yeah, a, a Tupperware burp. And so we put on the website, find the Tupperware burp. And so nice. we required people to go through all nice. the website and go to all the different pages to try and find Creative. the burp. And if they did, they went into a, you know, entered into a prize and everything and all this stuff. And the world was just like, oh my God. First, you got the lectures from the US. We don't call it a burp anymore. We call it a whisper. A okay. whisper. The I don't remember that. Yeah, the organization <laughs> called it a whisper. Everybody in the world, the world the organization. called it a burp. It's a burp. <laughs> <laughs> so, know that that's yeah. hilarious so um so yeah um and then you know so you did that and then of course you know europe was like oh no the internet is horrible you know da, da, da. <laughs> and they're yelling world. and fighting this you know and then sure enough three months later right they're popping on board, doing their own stuff, you know. They never come back and say, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah good, good, good idea, yeah. But they're like, here, proud, look at what we did. Like, yeah, you copied it. <laughs> <laughs> but good, so. Um, so it was a really exciting time. Yeah, exciting time. So I was working on that. I was, you know, traveling to Europe because we. You were traveling uh, Europe. Traveling all over the Germany, place. because Germany like Oh, no. Europe? At the start, it was mainly Switzerland because I was working yeah, on another course. one of my, my projects was we have three different design centers at Tupperware. So we yes, had. Yes, do. And so each one. The U.S. said, oh, this it has to be this way for the U.S. Europe is like, has to be the yeah. Europe. And Asia kept saying, you know, that's fine, but it's all too big. It has yes. to be smaller because our cabinets are smaller. So yeah, everything yeah. had to be smaller. So it's always funny. So when we made like a colander, we had to make three colanders. Right. So you had three talented people investing time on the same thing instead yes. of having three talented people working on three projects and having more. So I tried to do a, so we were trying to build at that time which wasn't in existence a worldwide product development right. program a worldwide product development team and so part of the things that i was doing was to try and show like a commonality amongst product lines absolutely everywhere you go and and that's part of my international that i've realized is every place you go everybody is different oh we're different you don't <laughs> understand we're different. telling me that i always laugh yeah. but the the thing that i think belgium the Netherlands is like two and a half to three hours from north to south. Yeah, no. And every 50 miles, they're trying to tell me that the business there is 100% different than 50 miles away. And you just don't understand. You know, the people are in Groningen are different than the people in Friesland. You know, and, and oh, those are those people down there. What do you mean down there? Are they like 12 hours away? No. They're like a 45 minute drive. There's three McDonald's down the road. <laughs> because that's that's how in Europe I, you know, whenever I had to get anywhere because we didn't have Google Maps, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything was in relationship to the McDonald's. Yeah, I kind of knew where all the McDonald's were because I ate in them all. And so, oh, you mean that McDonald's there? No, no, the other. Oh, that one there. Yeah, they have the good chicken nuggets. So. I remember they said our taxes are different from their taxes. Uh, they charge it on something and you have to pay them. It's not so different. So you're so, like so, going over there, you're doing this design center mm -hmm. coordination worldwide. And, uh, what? and so what you ended up finding out and learning, and, and I think this is a, you know, it's a fairly, um, it's a fairly simple rule that I work off of, which is amongst cultures around the world, about 90% is the same. Yes. You know, and if you think about it fundamentally, we all have families, we all want to take care of our kids and we all want the best 
for our kids and we want our kids to have more than okay. what we had. Okay, that's universal. Right. And we can focus on the universal, we can focus on the differences. And so we get caught up focusing on the difference. So the thing is about, for every market, about 90% of it was the same, 10% of it different. Right. But in many of those markets, that 10% was critical. You had to give it a nod, you had to and, uh, and say you thing. had, um, you couldn't just, ignored and say it was only 10% because right. that 10% could be stronger than the 90 and you had to understand it and recognize the the little twerk and uniqueness that made that market different than the other. Um, and so when we did the the analysis, I think like 80, no, sorry, not 80, like 93% of all the product, that the top 20 around the world, 93% had commonality. Right. But there were very, very strong, unique differences in each market. And you had to reflect that. That's right. one of the things that Tupperware did great because um, Tupperware was this, you know, you had many other companies, many other direct sellers, selling companies, many other companies that had like a European head and everything flowed from the head. And Tupperware was tremendously decentralized. Right. So it was a little bit more economically inefficient right? Um, but, because you had marketing in every depart, every country and everything. Right. But that allowed local countries to maximize their opportunities the and they did oh man and they did um and so part of what what we were trying to do was to keep that uh localization and maximization of a market while building an umbrella of link over and support so we weren't constantly yes. reinventing the wheel. a lot of fascinating cool stuff but you know like from what i could tell is that um and ho hopefully I'm not overstating this, is that you and I had kind of a different view on the world. And your your view, you, you and I were different for sure, but Americans generally don't have that open view mm -hmm. <laughs> that we see. And a lot of times, which I'm sure you got the same thing, is, hey, you, you're not like an American that we thought, you know, yeah. because you're open to our culture yeah. and you're open to what's going on. And I think, um, you know, the thing we try to talk about on Money with Mac and G is, um, an entrepreneurial spirit means being open to new ideas, mm -hmm. to being open to pivots and so on. And from the stuff that we've done, you have to be open to the different cultures. Oh yeah, absolutely. And no, like you said, it could be really 90, 10, but that 10% could overshadow yeah. the 90 just because they believe it in their country. Mm -hmm. We are so different. So you have to acknowledge that mm -hmm. and then go with that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just, I found like when you go into any market, you try and learn the language. Yes. Now I, I, I have enough trouble. Not the whole to, language. I have enough trouble trying to speak English. Buenos dias, cómo está? And I knew I could study Dutch or Russian you or have a chance. I could study it for years, which I did, and I chopped it up like you wouldn't believe. But there was so much appreciation for the way. edge. It goes a long way to, to them because what you're doing is you're showing respect and saying <laughs> you guys matter. And in general, the ones that miss that are the ones that miss that connection. And if you're not connecting with the local staff yes. you're not getting it's anywhere. a big because and i had to bring change so every market i went into was like the markets that you know you know ben they've been down for for Ever. 10 years they're beat down they're you not know, feeling good they haven't lost they you know everything's shrinking they've basically given up and and but they think what they're doing is as best in the right way right. you can humanly do it even though no success is coming exactly. and you've got to be the agent of change and convince them that it doesn't have to be you. like that yeah. and and if you don't build you can't if you don't build relationships you have nothing to leverage off they of. made so much fun of me when i said pescado de amor which was like a telenovela and that's just like a soap opera mm -hmm. that they used to have and i thought i remembered it was a pescado de amor which is the fish, fish of love. love yeah i was gonna say you're saying the fish of Love it's, you, like, yeah. it's like pecado, <laughs> which means like the heart of love yeah. or something like that. And they just laughed and laughed. And that little screw up because mm -hmm. I was trying open so many doors. It's yeah. like, hey, you're the Pescado de Amor guy. And I'm like, yes, I am. And it's pretty hilarious. Yeah. And they would let you in and talk yeah. to you about stuff. And, um, you know, I, I, I think the skill set of being open to those new ideas, the skill set of being open to the cultures, um, is a really big talent and it's a skill set that um, can get you uh, uh, really far in your career and in your life. I mean, especially from an entrepreneur's perspective, right? You're seeing the differences, mm -hmm. you're realizing which differences are actually valuable or not, and you're putting them to really good use mm -hmm. and they're, they're valuable. And ideas don't get you to success. Being exactly right does not no. get you to success. 
people get you to success. And yes. if you can't get people on board, you'll never get a great idea anywhere. You can be 100% right mm -hmm. and never get anything done. Yep. So... So it's a, it's a big difference. One person in a, in, a, in a huge organization, and you need not that one person pulling the midnight oil. You need everybody. It's getting the team running the team. all in the same, you know, cover, you know, you know, and all of these great books. So you're like, you're at Tupperware, and you're doing these mm -hmm. interesting things. And then you, what we call roll out, you roll out from corporate into the field. Yep. And in the field, where, where was like one of your first like positions? First positions was at over in Frankfurt. Okay. Uh, they managed and were targeted with opening up all of Eastern Europe. So I was going into, you know, Czech Republic, Lithuania, Latvia, wherever. Scary, um, Scary at all because those are some big, pretty big names. Like people in the U.S. go, what? It's really over there. Czech Republic is gorgeous. Uh, oh, absolutely Czech, beautiful. Slovak Republic. Um, had a, had they were all there. amazing. Just... Uh, Remember Some Aggie? more colder than the other. Remember Aggie? Yeah. 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 Aggie was great. So <laughs> anyway, so, but yeah, it is absolutely so, beautiful. So you're so, going into these places and opening them up. Yeah. So you're opening them up. You're getting, you know, because we're a very grassroots. Our business is in the home. So, you know, you're having to make those connections. So, you know, you're going in, you're meeting friends of friends, you know, just trying to find anyone to start to do some price sensitivity, to try and understand what pricing you could probably pull off in the market, you know, start to build, start to understand Gosh. income levels and how much, you you're know. You're learning a and, ton. And, and yeah, so you're really digging deep into understanding the culture, the mindset of people. Which um, is, and it can be applied to the US too. It's the model. same thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like a, instead of it, this country, it's the U.S. and you're asking the same things, but, mm -hmm. but you're figuring this stuff out and you're in these like pretty exotic places, right? Not necessarily fully protected. Exotic? Stuff. Riga? I would say exotic from a perspective, but it's completely <laughs> different from what you were used to. Moscow, four things on the menu. You have still, boiled chicken, okay. boiled beef, boiled I look at the definition. pork. <laughs> I didn't say and, it was exotic. And boiled fish. Okay, I'll have the boiled beef. Sorry, we don't have that today. Okay, I'll have the boiled chicken. We don't have that today. Okay, I'll have the fish. We don't have that today. Have the pork? Okay, let me go check to see if there is any. But yet there's a two-page menu on vodka. So I'm not sure that's that exotic. People, it doesn't have to be cool to be exotic because there's a lot of exotic places that just don't have really great food. But at the end of the day, you're... You're experiencing all this stuff. Told you my pod from the last <laughs> podcast. Exotic. I go to the bathroom and they ask me if I want one or two sheets. Or two sheets. And there's a price difference between the two. Based the, upon the type of business I was gonna do there. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I thought the question was, Hey, are you doing a number one or a number two? Because I charge you different for those. I'm like, oh my god. And if you're doing number two, how's your stomach feel? You need two sheets <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I remember the first time that hit me was in a Belgian train station. And I was like, really? I got to pay? And I got to tell yeah. you which one I'm going to do? I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to admit it to the number two right now. So um, Yeah, I was outside. I was in the city of Pushkin outside of Catherine the Great's palace at this like <laughs> place that basically had a hole in the ground. Oh, yeah. It's a, we call it a Turkish and, toilet, which hopefully is not offensive. Kind of like an outhouse that they charge for. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to charge you 10 cents and, to go. <laughs> To the bathroom. Okay. But uh, so you're and doing. You're in the train going back and forth to the city, and somebody's walking up and down the cars selling things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And because it's entrepreneur, it's commerce, people trying to make money. And it's not just what you think, it's band aids. I never forgot. Because a pack of band aids comes in a pack of 20, that's expensive. So he's selling two, three band aids at a time. Oh, my. <laughs> Anybody need two band aids? Oh, two, my. Yeah, two rubles. Get some of your band aids. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. There are all these just these weird stories. Of buy, that's a great example. Buy in bulk and sell it. Sell an individual for a markup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. bought in a bulk of twenty band aids and sold them one by yeah, one yeah, for yeah. a huge profit. <laughs> oh, jeez, takes you ten years, but you got through there. So you've been Tupperware. You're you're going into the field. You are learning about a number of countries that you've probably mm -hmm. never really read anything about before and now you're trying to figure figure stuff out uh, out of Germany so and, and a lot of what we're doing is if you think about it as micro entrepreneurs is yes you know so I agree in our businesses um, you know you're going into the grassroots of the country all throughout the country and you're meeting individual people that are trying to start and build their own little let's say Tupperware business yep. um, wow. and helping them to fulfill their dreams and some of these people 
I mean, they grew, you know, there were school teachers that are getting paid 200 a month, but hadn't been getting paid in six months. And that's just amazing. And she started with us. And after I think three or four years, she was earning close to a million dollars a year. A million dollars. And I, I wasn't even near that. (laughs) (laughs) And, but that's the way it should be. She would, it's a risk reward. I was corporate. She was taking a lot of risk in doing this. She deserves a bigger payoff and she got it. God bless. It was because awesome. the $200 over there is a big deal. And you know, that's mm-hmm. what you can live, live on and have a good life yeah. or not a good life. With Milo Serdenko. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So, so you had this kind of this mindset, you want an international, which I always thought was really cool. International entrepreneurism and helping people. You know, it was a perfect fit. And yeah, it was awesome. It was a great was. run. I mean, Mary, what's her name in um, Ireland that we both knew? Um, she was just an amazing woman. <laughs> I know we can't talk. Well, nobody Mary knows. Mary Brennan. Yeah, you said it. You weren't supposed to say it. I am not supposed to say She that. gets caught in the bathtub. Well, and... I, I wasn't going to oh, say sorry, that far. Oh, sorry. Okay. We love you, Mary we Brennan. Love we love you, Mary. I do. I so and, love you. And you are more than welcome on another podcast to tell your story. And you're more but than welcome to come You here. love to gather attention and get yourself into but situations that you needed hotel staff to get but you what, out of. <laughs> but what I was going to say was, but God bless she was an amazing person person Absolutely. that had this great personality that just needed an opportunity and yeah. she took it and she did wonderful things and for that I am grateful because she's she gave so much joy yeah. to me when I was over there and what you heard thousands and thousands of times is how that opportunity changed their lives literally changed a lot of changed their people don't, their, don't realize it because it, it's all about the Benjamins but um, on a lot of some made some really great money, some made a little money, but they, but generally, at least what we're proud of in Tupperware is they all walked away very happy about the experience and how not they all, but it, walked away happy about the experience and it was life changing for them. It helped them to build self confidence and that self confidence, which I was proud of, got to flow through the family. So the kids yeah. got to see their mom glowing um, and getting success, and that inspired a little girl that she could get success too, maybe in life. Exactly. Um, and that was so- To I mean, me that, that meant something. That was so rewarding. That was what, what the value of all of it. Yeah. And you totally did. You totally got energized and you had a sense of gratitude and reward. And they, when they got success and they were on, let's say stage as number one, you know, um, and, and she's, in, the great part about it is you say, okay, did I do that to her? No, she did that to herself because for every one of her, there was someone else that said I couldn't, and so they didn't. She did it herself, but I got the satisfaction out of knowing that I had the opportunity to provide the tools. Yes. But she was the one that chose to take advantage, pick up Absolutely. those tools and work with them. And that and, was and that was time. and that was a tremendous amount. I didn't get her success. She got her own success. I was in accounting and finance, so I was just happy that I was. Even but we were part all part of, of the that. same. So. We we're all part of the same wheel that was doing the same thing, which was providing opportunities for people. I have amazing uh, memories of Tupperware. The different things that we had done, the different people mm-hmm. I had met, how there was a lot of gratitude. There was a lot of you know just thankfulness yeah. of it all it was pretty crazy absolutely so you're so you're doing you're doing the work <laughs> out in eastern uh, europe yep. and then you get the opportunity to be to be a managing director somewhere i can't remember what, what was the first place you went for a managing director was that in russia, russia? yeah okay in russia so, you got so I did russia started up from scratch and that was a rocket ship and so after that um because i remember talking to you about russia and you're like <laughs> hey, yeah. hey dude i need four thousand. what are you that's the bulls that you have you know that are um ready to be destroyed or whatever i'll take them all <laughs> and i'm like i like this guy well you had the 98 crisis there and the the ruble went from like exactly you know every single day the ruble was just jumping around devaluing i have the pride of knowing that i am the only tupperware country to have actually have a minus sales month because the ruble shifted the other way. So everybody returned because we were on this dollar basis. And so we had like negative sales one month. I mean, sure, that darn thing grew up to like over a hundred million or something like that. But it was rather funny that when that month came in and you, you had your monthly performance report to corporate and had to explain how you ended up with minus sales. Um, because I remember you like, you, you were schooling me and all kinds of stuff. It's like, Ben, you don't understand. He goes, I'll take the cheapest stuff you yeah. can get me because 
that stuff is worth so much more here. Mm -hmm. And if I could just get it for like 10 cents, mm -hmm. I can I can make some money. Because again, different markets were different mm -hmm. ways. You know, they didn't care that it was the latest color or not. They were no. focused on functionality. Yes. They were driven by functionality. And if the product worked, they were willing to pay for it. They didn't care what color it was. Yes. So, so all of the stuff so from Europe different. that nobody wanted, if they were gonna give me 75% off, off for me to get rid of their, it. Thank you, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I love that because so. I because I was having a problem getting rid of stuff and nobody was doing that. And you were just saying, yeah. give, give it all to me. I'm like, well, we're sending more to you. Let's go. <laughs> so that was awesome. So. Yeah. So you're running you're running Russia and you tell me that great story about how all your computers disappeared that one time. Oh yeah. So you know you have in Russia you have some dark elements. So, you know, in those days you had a lot of mob stuff and a lot of gray work um and we were in the we were in the uk at the time right didn't we didn't you get well, the call in the uk but uh, yeah yeah because i was managing both at that time jumping because we were hanging out and you're like you're not going to believe this yeah they stole all the computers they stole yeah. all the computers but we're paying them um, what do you call it, protection money and and for people who don't know that's a real thing and it's a real thing in a lot of places and you know you're paying that money and then you're like you pay certain people who you hope have good enough relationships that other people won't steal or try and bother you because they're afraid of those people. Yes. And so the, um, they're being paid and then all of a sudden everything disappears because somebody got, comes in in the morning and goes, oh my gosh, none of the computers are here. You make a call to the what facilitator, is that the guy, right way to say it? <laughs> to the facilitator and then all of a sudden, what was it? Our security. Your security, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, your security the analyst. Names, yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden Who it shows up KGB. two hours later yeah. or yeah. whatever it was yeah. and, and it's not put together, it just shows up in the middle of the uh, room with all the cables there and you, you put that together. But there are so many stories and- Oh yeah. And you had, I, it, well, it was interesting learning because it, it was during a very crucial time in their history where they were making a conversion from communism a to communism planned economy to a capitalistic market driven economy, you know? So, I mean, a great example was we saw this meeting space that we needed. It was about 250 meters. Perfect. It was sitting for a year and a half, not being sold. And we needed a space and we just needed it for about six months. Right. And I'm just like, came up to the guy and I'm like, okay, this hasn't sold for a year and a half. I'll take it for six months. You can put it on the market. Keep it on the market. All you need to do is give me two weeks notice, I'll be out of there. So at least you'll get some revenue in for the next, whether it's week or six months until you get rid of this, but right. at least you get some free money in, you know? Right, right. And I'll even re remodel, we call it remodel, um, I'll even remodel the place, get it all painted everything, because that's what I'm gonna need it for. Great deal, free money. And he says, no. Yet. <laughs> no, he says, no. I'm like, you know what, he has his number, because in the old days of the Soviet Union, you had your number, you had your price, and that's you, what you people paid. paid. That's what people paid. And he would rather sit. On it. Sit on it. nothing. To get an expectation of a price than to negotiate, get a little bit less or a little piece less. Then um, keep it on the market for another six yeah. months. And sure enough, two years later, the thing was still not rented out. Yeah. But that, and you were dealing with that mindset. So it wasn't this American logical you know, way of going about it. It's just, um, you know, and you had to deal with that. And so some of the things couldn't work and operate the way in which you wanted to and you hoped to. Exactly. So you started to, you, you did Russia, you learned like a lot of great stuff and mm -hmm. then you moved to other countries, right? Yeah. That's how we met because we yeah. met in London. We met in London. And uh, uh, we're going to some... turn around the UK, which was awesome. <laughs> it was a great adventure. It was huh? a crazy, great event. It was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work. It was work hard, play hard. It was really interesting, but it was really exciting because we, like we talked about, we took a market that was down for 10 years in a row. Yeah. And then just like within a few months, we started getting plus again and getting back on the track and, and to watch people that had been beaten down year after year Absolutely. and to start to get hope um, and to start to believe. Um, and that's part of one of the, the big lessons to learn there if you're ever in is anyone that's looking to do a turnaround, you have to have your strategy for what your next two to five years is, but nobody's gonna wait two to five years. Yeah. You need to combine short-term wins and momentum to a long-term goal. Yeah. And and you got to always so every everything you do has to have a long-term vision of where you want to be but short-term actions right now that help you to get things 
going, but also are aligned with where you want to be two to five years from now. And if you do anything that's not aligned with where you want to be two to five years from now, you're taking a step back. And so that that's kind of the, the interesting part. We got some early wins in the beginning, got people to believe, and then it became a snowball. It was brutal, though. I, it was brutal for oh, me. Yeah. Because I can't remember how long I was there before Invoicing you Invoicing was down for six months. Um, <laughs> remember you know, to sue people? At the time. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. At the time I walked in, my finance person was um, had uh, claims against my finance person being Ben. <laughs> Just so we're clear. <laughs> my finance clear, person but, had, uh, had claims see. against, what, 18 of our 25 distributors? Or was it 22 of our 25 distributors? It was a lot. I I remember going into going down to Surrey to meet with, um, which I, we always we always kept saying sorry, but it's Surrey. Um, I went down who to is Surrey because I know who that is. Um, we're not mentioning that oh. name because there's probably a legal, still legal stuff going on there. <laughs> it, it was the husband wife down in Surrey, wasn't it? Or was it yes. The okay. Okay. Going down to Surrey, going in their house, sitting in their living room, and they were distributors of the year last year. Our number one best best. And I come in and say, I'm new here. I'm really excited. Congratulations. <laughs> what can guy. I do to help grow your business? And she breaks down crying and says, well, I have to be in court next week because you guys are suing me. <laughs> I did. And once I, did. I get through, the, I can't focus on anything else until I get through that. And I was just like, oh, God, this is going to be a little bit longer and a little bit harder than I thought. <laughs> You, you to think I never told you, or maybe I did, did, but I had probably at least a dozen distributors in my office crying their eyes out. Yeah. How dare But also you that was the place, you? that was the place where I called a distributorship, which is a business, right. you know, because they had warehouse stocking. I called, I got the answer machine and, uh, and we're just going to call her Susan because there were no Susan. I was going to say <laughs> Jane, but we have Jane. So <laughs> yeah. There is Susan. I call and Susan and say, um. And here they answer me. Hi, this is Susan. My knickers are down by my knee and I'm sitting on the toilet. So once I get off, I'll give you a call back. And she thought that was cute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, this is a, a business. Of- this is- no, it was, I'm sorry. It was like, welcome to Tupperware Distributorship. <laughs> I'm Susan. My knickers are down by my knees and I'm sitting on the toilet. So I, I was like a young okay, kid you when this was all happening. Out. I know, but I was like dying. And you're because- just like going, oh my God, you're we're like- going to grow with this? <laughs> No better than that. You know? But again, it was about modernizing contemporary a brand. We looked at the strategy, yeah. looked at where we were, looked at that where we weren't. We started to build a retail channel with kiosks in the, yeah, in the shopping kiosks. centers and to build our brand and to get our awareness out. We talked with some of the large grocery chains about doing B2Bs and we got a lot of great success. It was really exciting. The Tesco, yeah, that yeah. was pretty exciting. We took them all whitewater rafting, didn't know there was whitewater rafting in... Um, in, in the UK. Yeah, we took them up whitewater rafting. Everybody got them on the bus, told them we were going whitewater rafting. And I says, no way, we're not doing it. Not happening. Absolutely not. I hate this. They bitched them on the whole way up. We did the whitewater rafting. And came, oh, best trip ever. Loved it. Whatever. <laughs> you know, so super. <laughs> like, Why do you fight me on this? Because, <laughs> but <laughs> an openness and an open mind. And that's the thing, because you had 20 years of history. Um, and that was another lesson because it doesn't matter what business you're in. We had uh, a, a business where it was uh, a zero sum game. It was viewed as us or them. The, our customers, and which were our distributors, mm-hmm. they hated us. And we thought they were a bunch of yeah. not very intelligent people. Okay. Idiots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we and, found out differently. And, and, and what you end up learning is you're never going to get anywhere in there. Until you break down those walls, build partnerships with your customers, build partnerships with your partners, you know, all your 360 degree partners from suppliers to other markets Mm -hmm. that you can learn off of and and adopt and adapt um, to your customers, you know, building them all together that we're all going in the same direction and running the same way, you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. And once we got that, then we were running forward because they believed we were all on the same page and they were there. They were knowing that a screw up that we might have done was a mistake. We weren't, they really thought we were there to, to, fire them all. to screw them. Yeah, yeah. And once they realized that we were there to help them, but sometimes we make some mistakes, right? things started to happen. It, it was it was such an incredibly tough time, but also just an incredibly rewarding time yeah. as well. Yeah. And you know, I look back, and some of my best memories are at Tupperware. I just really enjoyed it. And uh, 
It sounds like you did too because you got the opportunity to be a managing director in a couple different locations. Yep. Um, you traveled all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, man, we, we literally could sit here and talk for two, three, four, five more hours on just all the fun stuff that we did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all the, the crazy times downtown, meeting the It Girls and... Um, all oh, yeah, the It stuff. Girls and her... <laughs> <laughs> the It Girl that lived... The It Girl is kind two of like the, the Paris Hilton type of person for the UK. She lived two doors down for yep. me in Notting Hill. And... Um, she invites us over to see her place, and it is the biggest pigsty you've ever seen. Um, I mean, the most unbelievable pigsty. Like you were walking dollars. over oh, stacks of clothes, and she's picking up what was it, toilet paper, yeah. and or <laughs> tissue paper or something. You pick up and go, oh, I, I sponsor that, and they give this to me for free. You know, oh, I sponsor this, they give this to me for free. And I'm like, God, if anybody saw this house, nobody would be giving you a penny. Uh, I know. <laughs> she and was so was... whacked out, and then started talking about. It. Wasn't she showing us the magazines that she was into? Yeah, and yeah, and her boyfriend stuff? that was like on drugs and in jail. And, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. That. And we both had girlfriends, and we're just like, well, we, we gotta get out of here. We gotta <laughs> get out of here. But at the same time, she's really super famous. This is kind of cool. Really Maybe a paparazzi will get a photo. It'll hit the newspaper. Tupperware will <laughs> get publicity, and we'll grow the business. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it because we were over there at 9-11 too, you know? And, oh, yeah. And we remember people interrupting so weird. interrupting our conversation and our meeting. And we just said, yeah, that's... Uh, Rolling a TV in. You know, the TV that they use for the World Cup. Because in yeah. Europe, nobody goes to work <laughs> when the World Cup, Cup is playing. So you have to have a TV. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember we were sitting oh, in the meeting and saw it. <laughs> But the World Cup, they shut the world down. I mean, yeah. over, over... If you don't years. put a TV in the office, people don't show up. He has the most sick days every... So you put it in there and people are working, but they're also watching. So anyway, and yeah, you just so, kind of roll with so, it. So uh, uh, 9-11 comes in and it's surreal. You're in a foreign country. Yes. And you're, you're watching, you know, the towers go down in a foreign country, you know. Where... And people don't... They can understand it, but they can't understand it. Yeah. And it just... And, you know, and of course, the whole world shut down. So, you know, we were supposed to be in Paris, like, because uh, uh, we reported up to Paris. We were supposed to be in Paris. Like, I was supposed to fly, like, the next day or the day after. And you're just, the whole thing was just surreal. Because a week later, you know, I jumped on a flight from Gatwick back to Orlando. And it was crazy because I'd never seen in Gatwick the number of automatic machine guns uh-huh. and the number of dogs, too. Because they had um, those, I don't know what you call them, uh, not the stiffing dogs, but the security dogs. Oh, yeah, like yeah. those German Shepherds. Yes, they Nasty, nasty, yeah. And um, I'm I, sorry, lovely animals. But just every, beautiful. But they are, but they were trained but to be nasty tra- if they <laughs> needed <laughs> to be. Yeah. And so um, I went oh, through. Oh, yeah, they were escorting the jets. If you're, The jets were escorting, remember? Yeah, yeah, flying yeah, yeah, over yeah, the yeah. Atlantic Originally and were coming into U.S. Yes, airspace. They were. Jets were coming to meet and escort a little bit. Yeah, and I got on the plane and people were like, are you crazy? You're going to be on the plane? I was like, this is the most secure time ever. I mean, I, I got so many searches going through the metal detector. It was absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. And Massages, the, we call them. The plane, yeah, the plane was only like 10% full. Mm-hmm. So I had like full rows to myself and it was awesome. Yeah. But... Um, but those were just yeah. some crazy stories. We should go over those sometimes. Just yeah, those that, that was just, yeah, it's surreal being in a foreign country when something like that happens in your homeland, yeah? And, and you're you trying know, to understand it, figure it out. And, you know, through our whole conversation, you know, one of the things just to get people more comfortable with is, you know, taking risks and, and some of the things that you did, they're a little bit off the beaten path for sure, right? You drove across the country to get to L.A. Mm-hmm. and you got this job with um, Disney. But then you turn around and you get your MBA from the University of uh, North Carolina. And then you get a job as a fluke with Tupperware. And what I mean by a fluke is... It was a fluke. You didn't even know or it was even a one buck radar. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was, was a one buck beer. <laughs> and then you get this it's job. It's a one buck beer and he's not here. <laughs> one buck beer, he's not here. So you get this job, but then it leads you to Eastern Asia, leads you to Russia, Everywhere, leads yeah. you to Germany, leads you to the UK, and all these crazy places. And you know, as we stressed before, and you and I have talked about, the path is not a direct path. No. And the success yeah. of individuals, Absolutely. especially when they're talking about money and their well-being and their wealth, um, those paths are, aren't straight, and you just need to continue to focus in on you know making just a little bit of progress every day yeah and so um but part of it then the part i would say that goes maybe goes against the career grain uh there's a lot of people that are focused on career ambition yeah um and what i tried to always do is focus on adventure 
And, and I respect because that. if you focused on adventure, you were doing things that were new, interesting, and having fun. And if you're lucky, then the rewards follow you. And sometimes it did, and sometimes it didn't. But it was always, they were always great adventures. But it never gets any better unless you actually try, and it never gets you any better unless you put yourself out there. And that's what we want to do, because I was never comfortable with money when I was younger. I was never comfortable with CEOs. I was never comfortable mm -hmm. with people in power. And over the years, I've slowly broken down those walls, and I've seen the amazing things that you, who is a pretty average guy, but with just exceptional skills and talent, was able to do in the 50 countries you've been in. <laughs> and I sit there and go, oh my gosh, I'm this average guy, but I speak three languages, and mm -hmm. I've traveled and worked in over 20 countries, yeah. and I've done these Great amazing things. And so... Um, you only live once, so you know. If, you, if you're focused on career ambition, you're focused on an end goal, and you may not be happy, you know, until you, in, and it hope, if you hit that end goal, I really hope you are happy. Or you can choose another path, which is to figure out what you like to do and do it, and the universe will reward you for it. But the, the whole thing about you leading a life of, of service, mm -hmm. because of what happened at a very young age, taking those risks, and being the, in those amazing places with an entrepreneurial spirit, which is an open mind, and the ability to work well with people, I think is absolutely fantastic. So mm -hmm. why don't we go ahead and um, end it there, and thank everybody for being here. Make yeah, sure absolutely. you thank subscribe, you. like, and comment. Time to wake up. And <laughs> time to wake up. Time to wake up. And if you're driving, oh my goodness. Oh, oh yeah, man. but I, I think there's some really great stories in there, and um, hopefully we'll get a chance to get back and do that again. So mm -hmm. we thank everybody for being here, and thank you, Thanks Glenn. for the opportunity. We really appreciate Love it. You very much you're, you're a brother to me so and we'll do it we'll best. do it again soon man absolutely thank, thank you. you bye see you later <laughs>